So today we're going to do a front and rear brake job on this 2001 Boxster S. Uh, right now, if we come in, we can see our brake pads are really worn out. So one of the first things I'm going to look at is we've got some wear on our brake rotor and it looks not so good, but what we need to do is see if these are savable by a machine job or whether we have to replace them. So on every brake rotor, there will typically be a size. On this car, somebody has painted the hubs black, probably to match the wheels. So I'm just gonna find where it's engraved right here and I'll use a wire brush to clean it up and that'll tell me what my minimum thickness is. So a little bit tough to read, definitely there. Minimum thickness, TH, is 26 millimeters. So I'm gonna take my micrometer and measure the thickness of the brake rotor. Just gonna slide it over but down below the lip. And we have 25.865. Now I could measure it in a couple of places. If it measured say 27 millimeters, I probably would measure in a couple of places just to see if there was any low spots. But this brake rotor is definitely worn out. It's under the minimum thickness and has to be replaced. If you can't find on the hub of your um, brake rotor that it will often be stamped is on the outside diameter. And you can see this is the brand new ATE one that we're gonna be putting on. Minimum thickness is 26 millimeters. So if you can't find it on this hub, it'll be right here. The other place is of course the factory shop manual that will give you minimum and replace thicknesses. The rear brake rotors. The rotor wear is a lot worse. There's a very large noticeable lip here. Although the brake pads, and we're just gonna look in from this side, it's a little bit easier to see with the camera. Uh, there's still some brake pad left on this uh, rear brake assembly, although we're gonna go ahead, change the rotors all the way around and change the brake pads, then flush the brake system. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is get my brake pads out. And the way the brake pads are held in is this one big pin goes through the center. There's a little clevis pin right there. We also have our brake pad warning wire that I needs to be unplugged. Because we're changing the brake rotor, I need to take the brake caliper off. It means I'm gonna be undoing these two bolts right here. So I'm gonna grab some tools and get at it. So I'm just gonna see if I can unclip these. These little plastic clips here that hold this on will often break. If they do, don't worry about it. I usually end up using a zip tie to hold it together anyway. You can either use a pocket knife or a small screwdriver. Pop that off. And it is actually plugged in. There's a little bracket over here that it plugs into. So we're just gonna pop this little locking lever up. And we can unplug our brake pad sensor. This sensor here is for our ABS system, just in case you wanted to know. So I'm just gonna feed my wire and pop it out of the caliper. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is push my pads back. When I do that, it's good practice to put a bleeder hose over the bleed screw and instead of pushing the hydraulic fluid back into the system by pushing the pad back, I'm gonna push out the hydraulic fluid that's right behind the pistons. This is the stuff that's usually been superheated by braking and needs to come out anyway. We're gonna flush the brakes after we're done, but this means that it's not gonna push it back up into the system. So I'm just gonna crack that open. I've got a drain tin directly below me. So that fluid will drain in there. And then I just need to find my way in beside the, the brake pad and pry that pad back once it's got enough clearance off the brake rotor. I can just very slowly and carefully push the pad back till it seats. And you can see that we were draining brake fluid out, so we're gonna go ahead and lock that side. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side of the brake caliper.
Okay, my pads are all the way back. Close off my bleed screw. Drain out the last of the fluid in my hose. Remember, brake fluid is corrosive to paint. So we don't want to get it anywhere near our paint job. So next I want to take and pull this little clevis pin out. So I'm just going to rotate this pin until the clevis, there's a little rounded portion, is facing up. I'm going to grab that with a pair of pliers, pull out that little pin. And the pin will just tap out. It is under spring pressure with our anti-rattle clip. So normally what I'll do is drive it about halfway, take my punch, put some pressure against that. And a lot of the times I can just work out the pin. Sometimes it'll have debris on it from brake dust and still be a little tight in the hole. And there's our pin out. And then I'm just going to put my thumb over this spring and that's going to allow me to pull my punch out. So I want to unclip my brake warning wire. Now the warning light was on in the car. You can see the brake rotor has cut the wire. This is how it turns the warning light on. Take our anti-rattle clip out. Then on our brake pads, Porsche uses a shim that has a little bit of adhesive to it. So I just take a scraper. You want to put it down there against the back of that pad. Bring it up and that'll come out. We can see there's the groove for our brake warning light. This pad was almost down to metal on metal. Now on this one, if you look in, you can see how the pistons are exposed from the shim. So I take my scraper, push that shim back. That allows me to get the pad out. Now these don't have to be replaced every time. I usually do them every second time on a car. Uh, typically this is here to stop the pad vibrating. The new pads that are going in will also have some weights here. I don't know why these ones, these are probably a cheaper aftermarket pad, no name brand, and they don't have the counterweights. Yeah, these are a Mintex, not my favorite brake brand. Next, I want to undo my caliper mounting bolts. These are a 10 millimeter Allen. I'm not going to pull the last bolt out completely just yet. Now over here, there's supposed to be a bolt and it looks like it's broken out in this one. So we're going to have to fix this. Uh, this is what supports the brake caliper line, stops it from vibrating. Uh, normally I would unscrew that, but what I'm going to do is just grab a zip tie because I don't want to leave the caliper hanging on the brake hose while I'm working on taking the rotor on and off. So I'll just put a zip tie through this hole and then I'll pick it up on a, one of the body mounts. I've got my zip tie in hand. Just going to undo the last part of this. So I'm going to let my brake caliper come off and all I need to do now is I'm going to take my zip tie and I'm just going to run it through the mounting hole. You can see my shim popped out but I'll go ahead and put that back in later. And all I'm doing is just leaving it suspended over here. We don't want it to hang on this brake line because we can damage it or bend this one. And now we can work on taking our brake rotor off. So the brake rotors are held on by two counterhead M5 screws. Now these don't need to be super tight. They're only there to hold the brake rotor when the wheel's off because when the wheel's on, it will clamp the brake rotor to the hub. But these can often get really, really tight and hard to undo. So to avoid stripping the heads out, I use an impact driver. Make sure it fits. Oh, that one actually undid. Yeah, this one's tight. When I use an impact driver, I'm just gonna load it, hit it. That's going to undo that screw and allow me to wind them out without damaging anything. You do need to hold on to the brake rotor because right now, if I don't, it'll just pop off like that and fall off. And that's it. There's our brake rotor off. 
So before I put the new brake disc on, I need to clean all of this hub area, and this is very important. If we put our brake disc on right here and there is debris, uh, whether it be rust, dirt, grit, grime, that's going to set the wheel offset. And that means the wheel's going to run with a wobble because it won't run concentric. So I'm just going to use a wire brush and scrub the hub down to get all the rust and debris off of it. So on the front of the cars that run vented brake rotors and the vents are drilled on an angle like this, there is a left and a right. And the way that you tell is this is the left side brake rotor. You want it slanting back on your hole drills towards the car. So the way this mounts is it's going to mount just like this and it's going to roll through this direction. So the reason why holes are drilled in brake rotors on performance cars is to allow the gas that's generated from the brake pad when it gets hot to get out of the way of the brake pad. So if you've ever experienced brake fade, which is when the brake pedal actually gets really hard, yet the stopping ability of the car reduces, what that is is the pad, as it's being pressed up against the brake rotor, is getting hot, and because it's made from an organic material, it is off-gassing. And that gas forms an ultra-thin film between the brake pad material and the brake rotor, and this causes it to lose friction. Now, the, when it has these holes drilled in it, as you're applying the brakes when it's really hot and you're really pushing the car, that gas is allowed to vent through the brake rotor and then come out the cooling fins right here. So these holes aren't for any kind of increased cooling. They're actually to help with brake fade with reducing the, uh, the gas generated from an organic brake pad. So what would happen if you put the brake rotor on the wrong way? Now, the cooling fins right here are designed, this is how our wheel is rotating. As our driving direction is this direction and we are left front forward. So as I'm turning, air is being sucked in through here and it's picking up on these scoops and it's being thrown out in a centrifugal force around here. So it's taking the hot from the brake rotor, pushing it out to the wheel and out to the car. So if we put this brake rotor on the passenger side instead, now we're turning this direction. So instead of my pump down here drawing air in, we're actually going to be pumping air into the brake rotor. It's still going to be cooling the brake rotor, but all of that hot air is going to be going straight onto your hub and your wheel bearing assembly. So it's actually going to heat that up even hotter, which is going to cause the, uh, the bearing to fail eventually and other components to wear out prematurely. When I put my new brake rotor on, I'm going to line up my two mounting screws with the two mounting screws on the hub. And then I want to turn my rotor and make sure it's not hitting anything. It should turn quiet and smoothly. It shouldn't hit the backing plate. It should be no scraping sounds. But normally when I'm at this stage, the next thing I do is I want to wipe down the brake rotor. Uh, most of the time, the new ones will come with some kind of grease or a light film on it, even when they're plated like this one. So I'm just using a brake cleaner. And I want to make sure that I remove any contaminants from both the inside and outside surface. So on the inside surface, I just rotate it. I also want to take all of my fingerprints away from it. If we have any contaminations on the brake rotor itself, it can contaminate the brake pad, which will reduce the braking efficiency. So next I'm going to put on my brake caliper. Just cut my zip tie. Now one of the important things to remember when you're doing this job is making sure not to twist up your brake line like this. If I bolt my brake line on like that, that's going to cause a reduction in pressure going to this caliper and it's going to make the car pull to the opposite direction. So you've got to be careful 
that when the brake caliper goes on, it goes on without flexing or twisting up this brake line. Let's make sure my shim is back in because this one fell out. So the torque on these is going to be 85 newton meters. So before I slide my pack in, usually we end up when we put the caliper on getting some more debris on the brake rotor surface. So I want to make sure I clean that off before I slide my pads in. brake pads. I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease right here and right here. This is the points that it sits on in the brake caliper. That's all you're going to need. Then I'm just going to slide my pad in, make sure it sits. You can see on these ones, these have the vibration counterweights. This is a, an ATE brake pad. So I cleaned my pin, it just had some surface rust on it, just to make it slide through easier. I'm going to put my anti-rattle clip in, making sure that this little clip is on the bottom side of the brake caliper. Also want to make sure that this hole is up. And then I'm going to slide it through, press our anti-rattle down, and then press it all the way in. You should be able to see that hole right there. And take our little clevis press it in, make sure it locks. And that's the pads installed. The last thing I got to do is install the uh, brake pad warning wire. And I've also got to secure our brake line with our small M6 bolt to the hub. So when I install the uh, warning wire for the brake pad, it's got a pin that goes in a hole in the pad. These little locking pieces will lock into the brake pad. You want to make sure that you are kind of careful with these. You only usually get one shot at it. They tend to break if you have to pull them out and you just press that down with your finger until it locks. Hook the wire under our anti-rattle clip. And that's going to lay into the brake caliper. This is going to wrap all the way around. I'm just going to swing the wheel out and it's going to plug in right over here. And then I can latch my lock down. So the last thing I'm going to do is just secure the uh, brake warning wire to the brake pipe right here. Now our little plastic piece broke as they normally do. You can either replace it from Porsche or as I normally do just use a zip tie. Position that. Cut the end off and that's our brake warning wire. We want to make sure it's not going to hit or get hung up on anything where it's running. Uh, on the front side, it does not lock into the strut. The rears will actually lock into the strut. So the last thing to finish the entire job on the front is put in this bolt to secure the brake line to the hub. Okay, that's going to complete the pad and rotor change. Uh, we've still got to do the other side. The procedure is going to be exactly the same on both sides. So we've moved to the rear brakes now and the procedure is basically going to be the same as the front brakes. On our brake rotor, on our rears, we have a substantial lip both inside and outside. But if we wanted to, we could go ahead and measure this to see if it's savable with the machine. Same thing, we've got our minimum thickness that is on our brake rotor. So you can see it just here. Let me why I brush a little bit and somebody's actually painted it which makes it a little bit harder to see but the minimum thickness is going to be 22 millimeters these have a rather extreme lip when I come up I can feel it uh, it's well beyond catching a fingernail so we're just going to replace the brake rotors 
So we're going to replace the rear springs and struts in this car. First we're going to take off the brake caliper and the brake rotor. So the procedure is going to be fairly similar to the front. There's a couple of little differences. We do have a parking brake assembly inside. Uh, to get access to the screws, uh, nine times out of ten there's going to be a spacer plate. When you pull these spacer plates off, normally they'll just slide off. Uh, somebody's painted this one so it's kind of stuck. So I'm going to have to very carefully try and get my scraper down in there. I can also gently tap on these surfaces. We want to make sure that if you do have to tap on it to get it off, sometimes it'll mar it and we want to make sure that we flatten out any bumps so when the wheel goes back on, it sits flat and runs true. Okay, so I have to carefully pry this off and it's got a lot of rust and debris right here from when the last time this was on. Uh, this surface was not cleaned up at all and probably did a little bit of damage. I had to get a small pry bar in underneath. So I'm going to probably bead blast this and I'll flatten this on my uh, granite block. Yeah, I got a little bit of burring right there. Just got to make sure that when this goes back on that it is perfectly flat. I'm going to disconnect my brake warning light wires. So I've got my plug right here. Going to unplug that. Now this one is supported. It's got a little rubber grommet on the rear that holds it into the strut. You can see it's got that little rubber grommet right there. And it's also got the same plastic clip that is most likely going to break. And then punch the pin for the brake pads. Okay, there's a pin and our anti-rattle clip out. Slide out my pad. The warning wire, you can see the wear right here. This is also kind of a dead giveaway that the uh, pads were put onto worn rotors to begin with, how it's worn into that shape. Bleed screws blocked on this side, so even though I've got the bleeder screw open, we're not getting any fluid coming out. So before I bleed the brakes, I'll have to pull that out and clean it. And I'm going to use my scraper again. Just come down in, get underneath those handy rattle pads. One of our pads, this is what the pads look like. They have a little piece here that allows them to push in and lock into the pistons. And there's the pad from our other side. I'm just unbolting our brake line to the wheel hub. And then next I can remove the two bolts that hold the brake caliper to the hub. Okay, with both bolts out I can lift the brake caliper straight up. Now on this side I can just go ahead and sit it in on the suspension. There's a big cross brace right there that'll support it so it's not hanging on the brake line. I've got two countersunk screws right here. So line that up in, load it, hit it, and that'll undo it. Okay. Some of the easiest ways to get the rotor off is now just hit it on the face. That'll break any kind of rust seal that it has. And we can ease it off. This one's been over adjusted on the parking brake shoes. We'll go through that setup when we put the new rotor on. But it should have just slid right off, but right now I can feel it's hung up on those shoes.
This is the parking brake surface inside. And this one's been dragging quite a bit. These shoes should only be engaged when the handbrake is on. And this one was kind of tight to rotate to begin with, which kind of makes sense. I'm just gonna clean out all of the dust. The other thing I'm going to do is take some uh, like 80 grit and I'm just going to scuff up the surface of my parking brake shoes and remove any glaze that's there. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then I want to take, this is my parking brake adjuster. Normally we would be adjusting through the wheel hole like so. Um, I'm going to just take this and screw it so the adjuster is all the way down. You'll also see the crud on the back that we couldn't get to. I can clean that off. So this little return spring right here that holds the shoes together also acts as like a detent on your adjuster. So I just took another screwdriver and held it back out of the way so I could spin it back easily. When this is all supported and the brake rotor is on, uh, this will act as a click. So you'll be able to feel each click as you adjust up here on your brake pad adjuster or brake shoe adjuster. So before I put my brake rotor on, just like on the front, take my wire brush and clean up my hub. I'm gonna put my rear brake rotor on. I've cleaned these surfaces uh, with my wire brush. Once again, staining is not an issue as long as it doesn't have any profile. We've got our two screws that are gonna line up here with our screws on our brake rotor. And I've also backed off my parking brake adjuster all the way so the shoes are collapsed in. So I'm just gonna hold this up. Line up our screws. And these screws do not need to be super tight. Uh, the wheel, when the wheel is tightened on, We'll hold the brake rotor against the hub. These are just to hold it in place whenever the wheel's off. And same as what we did on the front. We want to rotate it. Uh, it is hitting my backing plate. You can hear that scrape. So I'm going to have to adjust my backing plate and bend it out of the way. Okay, so I found where my backing plate was hitting and now I can rotate. And we've got a little bit of noise coming from the shoes inside, but we're not rubbing on our backing plate anywhere. So the next thing that I need to do before I put my caliper on is adjust my parking brake shoes. So we've got our star wheel right here, which is our adjuster. So I'm going to access it through one of the wheel holes for the wheel studs. And I'm just going to line it up and I'm going to use my flat blade screwdriver. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to adjust the wheel, adjust the adjuster until it locks up on the brake rotor and I can't move my brake rotor. Okay, getting closer. All right, we're locked up now, so it can't move. So now I'm gonna come back in on my adjuster and I'm gonna go back five clicks. So one, two, three, four, five. So now my wheel moves freely and I've set the distance on the adjuster so when I pull up the parking brake inside the car, it'll lock up and stop the car from moving. So I'm going to grab my caliper again. I have one of my little vibration pads that popped out when we were removing, so I want to make sure those are all installed which they are and nice. Uh, make sure we don't twist up our brake line again. Sit the brake caliper on, get our bolts in. OK, 
Okay, we're going to torque the brake caliper bolts to 85 newton meters. So I'm just going to lubricate the contact points where my pads sit in the uh, brake caliper. Then my pin, which I've already cleaned, I've got to make sure that this hole for the clevis is facing up. Take our anti-rattle spring. Compress. Clevis pin coming back in. Then the last thing I have to do is hook up my brake pad warning wire and secure the uh, bracket to the hub with the M6 bolt. Now I'm going to install my brake pad warning wire set. And the rears where they differ from the front is they have this little sleeve that's designed to lock into our strut to support it. And this is because they don't want to have this drop down and hit our axle at any point. So I'm going to take my warning wire and this part will actually slide. I want to find on the strut where it's going to connect right here. Bring it around. We want to just pull that back and lock it in. Then as we come around it's going to plug into our electrical plug right here and then lock down so this is going to stop it coming unlocked. I've got our cleaned and I actually flattened this on my uh, granite block with a little bit of sandpaper. Cleaned the outside. I'm going to line up on the bolt holes. Snap that in and then just to make sure so when I'm putting on a wheel I don't have any surprises, make sure a wheel stud's going to turn in. So that's going to wrap up our rear brakes. Uh, the next part in the brake job is going to be flushing the brake fluid. We also have to fix our bleed screw on this side where it didn't want to vent out. I'll pull that out next, take a look, see what's going on with that, and then we'll flush the brakes. The last part of our brake job is to bleed our brakes and change the brake fluid. Under the front hood is where the brake master cylinder is. We're going to fill it right here. I'm going to loosen up the top and take one of my shock tails and put it over there. This is just to help with letting air into the top of the brake master cylinder as I push it through. Okay, so when we're bleeding our brakes, we're going to start at the right rear. That's the furthest away from the brake master cylinder. Uh, this can be done two ways. It can be done with a pressure brake brake bleeder, which is attaches to the top of the master cylinder and pressurizes the entire system. We're going to do it with somebody sitting in the car uh, to actually pump the pedal for us. I'm just going to start with the outside brake cylinders. Put my wrench on, my bleed hose so I get my fluid going down into my bucket open the bleeder and have the person in the car pump the brakes. Okay, hold it down. Bring it up. Pump it a couple of times. Okay, hold it down. Pump it up, hold it down, okay release it. So when I have them pump the brake pedal through, that pushes fluid through and then I have the person inside the car pump the brakes and hold it. This is to make sure we get any air out because if we let the pedal up while the bleed screw is open we do run the risk of sucking some air in. So once I've done that, it's going to hose off any brake fluid with brake clean. Make sure our rotor is clean. We don't want any brake fluid residual on that. And I'm going to repeat the process on the inside bleeder, then go to the left rear, then the right front, and then the right rear.
Okay, we should have no air bubbles coming out and it should be a nice clean stream coming out of the uh, drain hose. Once I'm done on this side, which I am now, put my caps back on, do a final clean and move on. Yep, you can let go. So once you are done with the back, we're gonna to move to the front. You also need to pay attention to how much fluid you're cycling through. So after each wheel, I've been hopping up and topping off our brake master cylinder to make sure we don't run out of brake fluid. So we're gonna repeat the process that we did on the rear on the front. Start with the outside bleeder first and then have uh, your assistant pump the fluid through. Okay, pump it through. So now that I've bled the brakes through all the way, the final thing I want to do is top off my brake master cylinder. I've been periodically filling it as we've been bleeding. And now I just want to make sure it's filled to the full mark. Which is perfect right there. So our full mark, let me put the cap back on. If we move with this little arrow right here, and if you look, you can see the fluid level, I'm just gonna rock it slightly, is right at that arrow. So the brake master cylinder is full, all four corners have been bled, fresh pads, fresh rotors, ready for a road test.